What's up guys? Welcome back to another video. And in today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys how I made these 100,000 subscriber YouTube ingots made out of aluminum. That's right. I recently hit 100,000 subscribers. I'm super excited. And while I wait for the plaque to come in the mail, I figured why not make some of these myself? So let's get right to the video and I'll show you how I made these. I used my CNC router to carve out the pattern from polystyrene XPS foam and I even added my logo to the top right corner. I then use sheetrock joint compound and mix it up in a separate container with water. I then applied it to the polystyrene foam that I previously carved out. I didn't apply a thick layer, but I applied enough to coat the foam entirely. People ask in the comments quite often on what the joint compound is for. The joint compound leaves a barrier between the sand and the pattern. You'll do much less sanding when finished. And now I'm going to perform something called the lost foam casting process. This part of the process is where I bury this foam in dry sand. And the sand has to be completely dry. I filled the container about halfway with sand and now I'm going to place the patterns right on top of the sand. And then I'm going to fill the rest of the container with more dry sand all the way to the top. This process is very fascinating. Would you believe they used to make Saturn engine blocks and heads this way? back in the 90s, I still think this technique is still used today. Now if you're new to my channel, I use this technique quite often. I made some pretty cool stuff, so make sure to head back into some of my videos and check them out. And now that I filled this all the way to the top, I'm going to place a pouring cup right on the top of the foam. These are just regular soup cans with a hole cut out the bottom. I'm pressing them down into the foam slightly and then I'm going to fill it with more sand to lock those containers into place. This is where I'm going to be pouring the molten aluminum into. Now that this mold is all set up and ready to go, it's time to head outside and start melting down some metal. Now what kind of aluminum am I going to melt today? I have so many ingots to pick, but for this video, I think we're going to be using these aluminum can ingots. That's right. I made these out of melting aluminum cans a few weeks back. So if you're interested in seeing that video, when you're finished this one, just head back to my older videos and check that out. Now while that aluminum is melting, I'm actually going to be adding one more cast to today's pour. This is a Rolling Stones emblem, created the exact same way I did the YouTube logos. And I'm going to be making the mold the same exact way I made the other ones. I warmed up an ingot prior to adding it to the crucible that has molten aluminum in it. You don't want to add a cold ingot to a hot furnace. And what I like mostly about melting aluminum ingots is the fact that aluminum ingots have minimal draws. So when this is fully melted and you have a crucible filled with molten aluminum, you don't even have to spend time scraping away the draws that floated to the top. Right, the aluminum ingots have fully melted. It's time to turn off the propane to this furnace and remove this crucible and start pouring this molten aluminum into the mold.
I'm now going to put the crucible back into the furnace because I need to let this set for a little bit before moving it out of the way. Because don't forget, I still have that one other mold that I need to pour the metal into. Because I had the crucible outside the furnace and inside the furnace, I did get some dross from oxidation. So I had to scrape that out with a spoon. been about 20 minutes it's now time to pull these out of the sand to see how they came out now I'm going to use a wire brush to scrape away that drywall mud to get a better look Now that these are removed, I'm going to dip them into a bucket full of water to cool them off. Now I'm going to do the same thing to the other cast. All right, back in the garage, these are cooled off and dry. Now it's time to get a better look at them up close. And they sure do look good. Practically exactly like they were in the foam form. But now they are solid aluminum. Now it's time to put in the vise and cut it away from the extra aluminum and start cleaning them up. You didn't think I was going to make you watch me cutting each one away from that aluminum, did you? Well, now it's time to wire brush them. Now, I did do a lot of sanding after I wire brushed them, and I saved you from watching all of that work. Now, these first two, I didn't go crazy on sanding, but I did polish them afterwards. I really liked the textured look that the foam had. But now this one, and the following one, I did a lot of sanding and polishing to give them this shiny look. Now, even though I like the shiny look, I think I like the textured look better. Let me know what you think in the comments. Now, let's see what one of these weighs. One single aluminum ingot weighs 0.277 kilograms, 9.75 ounces, and 0.61 pounds.